Good morning, fellow privateers. I hope everyone had a nice weekend. The uh, spring has sprung. It's warmed up here in the Midwest, which is good. A little kind of a gray day. Good day for me to do my homework for the, the week ahead preview from your friends at Privateer FX. So we had an interesting week. Obviously, we had a bunch of central bank meetings last week. And um, what we noticed is pretty much starting on Wednesday, um, things were moving faster, at least in the FX space. It started on Wednesday. Things were moving faster and uh, and further than what the market is currently pricing. So, you know, the options volatility in all these asset classes is still very low, but you could just feel it on an intraday basis that um, the market itself was outperforming what the options market makers are pricing. And that includes, you know, things in the, anything from the VIX to the, uh, to the move index, which uh, measures the bond volatility. And, uh, and then of course the currency VIX, the C VIX. So we're going to start out <coughs> this week in the markets outside of FX because there were some pretty big moves. Um, you can see here, I've got the weekly charts. This is, we tend to focus on the weeklies on, uh, you know, my Sunday afternoons, Asia, Monday mornings, uh, just to see what the price action looked like in the, the previous week and, you know, kind of tell a story based on the chart. You can see here, this is the 10 year, US 10 year, um, yield. We had a big, big down move. Um, we took out everyone's support level, uh, was right around this 254, 255, and that had defined the range. And we took that out in earnest. Um, you know, big technical break. This was an old weekly fractal, so th this was a significant break. You know, a, a lot of it was on the back of some of the weaker data that was coming out. Um, you know, globally, um, I'm going to get to my economic surprise index if this thing, if I can get into it. Um, anyhow, so we had the big break. We closed the week under the two thirds fib, and this is going all the way back from those September uh, 2017 lows where, you know, we had a, a nice big uptrend. You can see the fib retracements here. So we closed under 248.60, which was the two thirds. Um, a lot of commentators are now targeting uh, the 200 week moving average. It comes at around 235. And then you can see this confluence of support at the, uh, the three quarter fibo um, and uh, some old weekly lows, some congestion area here that comes in right around, we'll call it 230. Um, it looks like it's going there. Um, if we do get follow through, I know that these markets have been listless, but if we do get some follow through in um, from this past week's moves, uh, we could get down there, I think, pretty pretty quickly. Uh, the buns, you know, I've been reading about this all weekend. Uh, this is the, the, this is not the, this is the bun future. You can see we had a massive outside reversal week higher, and um, the German buns are yielding right around uh, they did go negative uh, intraday and on Friday. You can see we had that inside week, so we did take out the, the lower part of that week. And the more powerful move is when we take out the low of that inside week and reverse and take out the highs. That's a pretty powerful move. You can see we closed right off the highs in the futures. So, you know, this is something that we're paying close attention to. All, all, the, all the weekend... Uh, newspapers, you know, I was looking at Wall Street Journal, I was looking at, uh, I was reading some pieces in the FT. Um, there's actually a great piece in the FT. Um, I'll try to, I'll try to share it, share it on Twitter. Um, talking about uh, the yield curve inversion and what, and it's pretty good. I'll post it. I don't want to waste any time in here. Um, so Brexit, it looks like they're moving this, postponing this uh, till April 12th. Um, there's an expected vote next week. This will be 
the uh, May's third attempt, trying to get this thing passed. Uh, the EU wants this done before their elections in May. There's no reason for you know, the UK to be voting um, in the parliamentary elections in the EU if they're not part of the EU. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, something from the FT. Uh, it looks like Parliament is set to vote on different Brexit options next week after ministers admitted private Prime Minister Theresa May's deal is unlikely to ever win MPs' approval. The vote will be the first time the House of Commons will rank different than Brexit options. Um, so again, the original deadline was March 29th, and this is now being pushed forward by two weeks to uh, April 12th and, and or May 22nd. Um, so April 12th, the UK does not approve Mrs. May's deal, or May 22nd if it does. There <clears throat> was a lot of talk in the papers out of the UK about, you know, May basically hanging on a hanging on by a thread and looking to get ousted, you know, kind of imminent. Um, so there'll be plenty of volatility. Um, the downside exposure is off the charts. I don't have it on TradingView, but I was looking at the risk reversals in uh, for the British pound. And let me see if I can figure one there. there it's, a, it's a pretty big, uh, you know, they're, they're really making a lot of downside bets for cable. Um, Potentially for a hard Brexit, and and analysts are predicting anything from kind of a eight to ten percent drop uh, in short order. Um, let me just reading my notes here. Yeah, so the sterling options positioning is aggressively skewed to the downside. Um, the protection demand is the strongest across all G10. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, all right, why don't we hop over to a couple other charts. So uh, this is the, the buns here. Now, if, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Um, we did make a new high for this whole move. We took out some of these weekly fractals. Yeah, this was a big area, this 28.15.17. We got up to a high of 28.66, I believe it was, and then reversed on the week. And we're back below this big pivot. So it was a weak close. We, you can see here it closed right on the right near the lows of the week. We'll move over to the daily. Um, it was not a bearish engulfing. However, if you um, if you uh, we'll focus here, uh, a lot of commentators are, are saying that we're going to go back down and test this uh, the 200-day moving average, and you know maybe even down back down to this. It was only two weeks ago we were down at 27.22. I think was a low. And uh, you know, rallied 140 points just in, <laughs> in a straight line on that massive, uh, massive buy program that was going through early in the week. I mean, it was just up every day, and it would barely pull back. I think the the average little corrections, um, you know, for these days here were you know like three or four handles. So it was pretty much a straight line up. And now we're, you know, we're looking a little heavy again. Um, the if I go back to the weeklies, or let's go to the daily here, the Nasdaq. So the, the, the S and P had a had a bearish engulfing, but it did not make a new high on Friday. Um, however, the Nasdaq, which if you remember, we were tweeting about this la late last week that the Senate, the daily sentiment index was up around ninety five percent. Um, we got some DeMarc sell signals that we have a lot of respect for that we use in combination with some of our own technical uh, voodoo. But you can see here we had a big outside reversal day lower. This was a huge green bar up, and then it collapsed and closed near the lows. So, again, this is looking, you know, this could, re this could retrace this whole move here if we run a FIBO, you know, just off that uh, this hammer bottom here up to Friday's high. You know, the third is down here at 73.23. I could see this retracing, you know, two-thirds of the move down to, call it 71.90. Um, and we did have some, uh, we did have some other, that was an outside reversal day lower, or bearish engulfing lower. Um, we did have some outside weeks, so we're going to pop over to my currency list. And we're going to go 
back to the weekly charts, this one being Aussie Yen. Um, and hold on one second, I have to respond to this real quick. Um, this is a bearish engulfing week in Aussie Yen. As you can see here from the, uh, and we're right on this, I had this old horizontal here. You know, we had some lows, and this this whole area, like right in here, is really important. So 77, you know, if we start getting under 77 cents, this thing is toast. Um, excuse me one second, got to respond to this. Anyhow, so that's Aussie Yen, and we can look at all the Yen crosses. There were a bunch of pretty ugly. Here's Cad Yen. That was a very, very big, close, very bearish engulfing. Uh, close on the lows, Euro Yen, uh, same deal, bearish engulfing. Uh, and then if we look at uh, Dollar Turkey had a massive move. There was uh, some news out of the central bank and about, it, about the reserves. And you can see what this did. It, it did close off the highs of the week. But, um, you know, we got up to, we almost got up to this five, uh, I believe this high was really 590 at least on Bloomberg, um, 586 to five, <coughs> 588, somewhere up there is a big level. This looks like it could retrace that whole big move. Um, you know, and remember, if we go over to the daily, look at this sideways pattern. We had these horizontals drawn. Like, it was just doing nothing. It was amazing to watch Dollar Turkey. The other markets were moving around a bit, and Dollar Turkey was stuck in, like, this kind of two-week range. And vol was getting smoked, and the average true range was coming down. And then Friday, with the news, with the panic, and it turned into like a big turkey yen trade. Um, I don't, most of you probably don't look at turkey yen charts, but we do. And there's that move. I believe it was about a 5% move lower. Um, you know, this was the flash crash that happened back in early January when on that Japanese holiday, and the Apple guidance. Um, so it's a, it's a massive move and, you know, spells risk off. Um, we did have a couple inside weeks in the currencies. So th these are on my these are on my radar for this upcoming week, <clears throat> one being sterling yen. Now, granted, we had this massive week two weeks ago. You can see I'm st I've got these horizontals. I'm playing a break. Actually, now I can tighten up. I'm playing a break either over the top side of this. So call it 138 or 148.3540 or below last week's low, which is 144.20. Um, you know, here we are, it's it's only two two o'clock in the afternoon, so we don't have uh, any ticks yet for the, the upcoming week, but we should get those in about an hour's time. So Sterling N for me is on the radar and cable as well, because again, it had that big move up and you know, we it kind of saved itself. You know, it, it was down at 130. There was a huge bid down there, and it saved itself and rallied 200 points into the end of the week. But again, you know, kind of either side of last week's bar, which would also take you know be just pretty close to the previous week's big bullish engulfing bar, that should set the tone for the next move. I have no idea if it's going up or down. I'm not going to even pretend. Um, some of the trades of the week. Um, from one of our uh, liquidity providers and uh, one of our banks was, is a short euro yen position, which I was just tweeting about to one of our followers. Um, this to me looks like if we start taking out these lows here, let me get the horizontal. I'm, I'm ignoring this flash crash bar, it, but you know you can see where the close is. So anywhere between this close at 120. Uh, 365 and then you have these uh, weekly lows here 123.40 this is a huge level so 123.65 to 123.40 if we take it out we will retrace this move which is all the way down you know 118 handle so we, we put on some downside euro yen on Friday uh, you know we did it I guess it wasn't we didn't enter at great levels um, I believe spot was at 12430 uh, at the time when we when we start taking out this this uh, this whole low which was this fractal on the daily I, I just flipped over to daily so 
once we started breaking down through here, um, and you could draw some trend lines from, from over here as well, I think that most of the market is focusing on uh, this trend line. Let's see if I can get to it. Uh, trend line. They're using this low here, that fractal, and they're connecting it to that one, two-point touch. I mean, I, I don't... I don't love two point lines, but you could you could also bump it up here, and it's either way it's it's broken, and uh, most people were talking about the 124, 50, 60 level. Uh, the other trade, the other trade of the week from the same counterparty was is to be long CAD MEX. You can see this big day here. Um, MEX long positioning is really really. Uh, the market is very long, so they think that that can come under pressure, and that's kind of a dollar neutral trade, which is not a bad idea. Um, here's dollar max it held. We went down um, on the Fed day. We went down to 75, the dovish Fed day, and then it kind of based. It had an inside day, and then as soon as we broke through uh, 1890 area, which is where it was right before the FOMC, it shot higher. It got all the way up to uh, 1917. And we have targets in dollar max, kind of 1920 and 19, uh, the 200 day, 1937, even back to this old, uh, uh, it's kind of a bad line now, uh, let me get rid of that. But, you know, retracing this, this swing in here, um, we've golden with saying 1947 would be a, a target, which would coincide with, you know, up near this, uh, this 200 day and the three quarter fibo of the recent swing. So something to look out for. They're also calling for dollar Turkey. We may as well look at that daily because it went parabolic. Um, there's the chart again. And here's the weekly. They have targets here around 590 and, and then six and 615. Here's 610. So somewhere up in here, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see these area, this area even in this next week, the way it, the way it moved on uh, on Friday. Let's take a look at dollar yen. Um, people trying to express their their risk off views. Uh, the big breakdown was here through these lows, uh, 110.40, and the targets for this were 109.70, which we got down to 109.74, and uh, this is actually. That. Let me get let me get to the daily. What day is that? Twenty second. All right. So yeah, this is ticking now. So we're sitting right here on the <clears throat> just below where we closed on Friday. We like 109.25, and the bigger area support would be down way down here at 108.55. Um, you can see we broke this uptrend line, and that 108.55 would match up with this low here, which is 108.50. So for the week, I'd say targeting 108.55, 50.55. Um, assuming we continue the risk off. Uh, crude oil, we talked about. I believe we had a DeMarc sell signal. We also had a doji on Thursday. Uh, that, had, that can target 56.40. Um, the VIX, let's go back to our macro uh, page here. Here, we'll take a look at crude oil. I drew this. There's that line, 56. comes at around 56.40 now. Um, and that, that pattern's pretty good. So this is an evening uh, star, do, doji, you know, where you get the three-day pattern, big up day, doji-ish, and then a big down day. So that, that's looking a little negative, which would play into our risk-off theme. Um, oh, the VIX closed right just under the 200-day uh, moving average. It did pierce it. It got all the way up to 1750. Um, this is our fractal high here. You see I have this horizontal. We start getting above here, you're going to see a big retrace. And this is, you know, back in the December panic, the Christmas Eve panic, a couple days. You could see Let's just take this top here. Where this is where stocks bottomed. 
you know, we, we've had, you know, a couple weeks of just kind of sideways losing momentum. We got some DeMarc buy signals of the VIX. Um, you know, this is this could easily get to 2150. That's only a third fib of that uh, three or four month three or four month swing. Uh, going back over to currencies, uh, people were asking about the euro dollar. I don't trade it. It's a waste of time. But we know the key level. We're back below. Uh, we're back just under 113. We closed around 112, uh, right around 113. But we think that it can get down to 111.75. What was that? 111.75 was that low. So until this breaks, you know, either side of this, 114.50, call it 111.50, um, it's still in a range. And we're not getting involved in Euro because I think it's a waste of time. I think there's better, uh, better things to be paying attention to. Looking at the economic calendar uh, for the week ahead, Europe, Germany's IFO, very important. We had the, the week PMIs out of Europe. So IFO is on um, is coming out you know, Monday morning in Europe. We have Draghi speaking on Wednesday. We have some inflation data out of Europe on Thursday. We've got uh, a bunch of Fed speakers throughout the week. Uh, we have the... Let's see what it is. Tuesday and Wednesday morning, Asia time, is the RBNZ. The consensus expects them to just keep neutral. I look for rates. Of course, the Brexit vote. Don't want to even get involved in that. And then U.S.-China trade talks are resuming with Lighthizer and Munchen traveling to meet the Chinese leaders late in the week. Um, we expect the market overall. It, it is a spring break here in the U.S. for a lot of, of for a lot of families. So. My guess is that the liquidity is going to be at a, a major premium, and you know our, we saw some of that toward the end of last week, and uh, it could get some vital moves. And what, what I was talking about at the in the early part of the video is we have we are seeing the markets move further and faster, and the straddles are not reflecting this. They haven't caught up. It takes a while for these options market makers to realize that you know there's more intraday volatility than what they're actually what their pricing models are saying and that gives you know shorter term tactical players a, an advantage so it's time to pay attention and uh, I wish you all the best of luck I will be out uh, Tuesday through Friday and my colleague will be around and we will um, you'll be hearing from us every morning on the European Open and I will be paying some attention and shooting out tweets you know, when there's a there seem to be opportunities or any, any interesting news bits that come out. All right, good luck this week, and we'll talk to you, uh, talk to you next week. Cheers.